Greetings everybody, today we'll talk about one of the most cheapest sedans in the world today and why cheap cars are dying faster than the, than the family values all over the world. Like no God! No God! Please no! 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 This is Chevrolet Onyx and this is a cheap car, convenient, well-equipped sedan. But those prices are only in Uzbekistan, because GM has monopoly in Uzbekistan and specifically on budget cars. That's why Onyx is almost double the price that is in China. In China, Chevrolet Onyx today will cost you from $11,000 to $13,000. But what concerns me is why USA and other countries where GM is thriving do not get cheap sedans like Chevrolet Onyx or Chevrolet Monza that cost from $11,000 to $13,000 with the dealership margin in China. So basically they can get it from nine to 8,000 in the United States and sell it for 10 to 10,500. Only South American countries have access to affordable sedans that start from $10,000. If somebody knows why, let me know in the comments. I'm very interested in that. Let's go back to the car. The design of this Onyx is nice. It's not ugly at all. Front has special vent for the turbo and all holes are in the correct places to cool engine and turbo. Even design of headlights with the chrome lightning shape is uh, good looking. Design from the side is also very subtle. No wild shapes, it's a little bit boring. Even fat YouTuber that is passing by does not ruin nice looks of the car. Design at the back is also good, everything is logical and have proportion. Trunk is spacious and 100 kg sack of talent can get in and out of the trunk without any problems. Also, I like how the instruments can stick to the floor mat and uh, that's very nice. What I do not like are drum brakes. The fact that in 2023 somebody uses drum brakes is already inappropriate. The funny thing is that in China those are disc brakes, they're not, they're not drum brakes. But in Uzbekistan they put drum brakes and that's very sad. And also second thing that really annoys me is this antenna. This antenna really reminds me of an antenna from Deo Nexia that was produced in 1998 and then year 2000. Welcome to the world of small interior and shitty and trashy plastic panels all over the car. Main design of Onyx interior is very good looking, futuristic and uh, nice to look at. All the buttons and switches are in the right places and very simple to use. Also we have wireless phone charge, cruise control, handbrake that is wrapped in cheap plastic, center console that is also wrapped in very cheap plastic. When you sit in the car, the seating position is comfy. Also, we have interesting speedometer, USB port, and two USB ports at the back, and uh, that's very nice. Speaking of back, seats for back passengers are very, very nice, especially the headrest. It was very good. I love the headrest in this car. I don't know why, but it was so good, better than my pillow. Also, this car has light sensors, heating seats, and of course, stone for soulless politicians that want to sell kits to so-called oppressed pedos. Yeah, I hate those people. Generally speaking, interior is well equipped, but the materials are so horrible you want to burn the car. Under hood we have this tiny 1.2 liter turbocharged 3 cylinder engine that looks very very small. I love the fact that they didn't put the stop stop option to this car. This engine is very efficient. I drove like a lunatic for 100 kilometers with AC and it consumed only 9 liters per 100 kilometers. And with my driving style, it was a very good number. If you drive like a normal person, then it would eat like 6 8 liters for per 100 kilometers. This tiny creature that calls itself engine generates 132 brake horsepower and 160 newton meters of torque. 100 kilometers will happen in 9 seconds. When I first look at the engine, I thought if I floor gas pedal, it will give me this noise. But I was wrong. Engine is very feisty and not bad for its segment. The engine needs only premium fuel and oil change every 6 7,000 kilometers. And I have no idea how long will turbo last. Usually, turbo GM engines they can last up to 100,000 kilometers top if you properly maintain them but if you just uh, use it as like a normal car it will last up to 70,000 kilometers and then the turbo will stop working. In my opinion on why we do not have cheap cars I, I think that manufacturers 
don't want to make them because they don't have big margins and just don't want to sell small SUVs because they're more profitable. But in the 80s and 90s and 2000s, every car company had their cheap sedan for common people like us. And everybody were fighting for small margins. But today with all those SUVs and huge profits that they bring, car companies are not interested anymore in uh, giving an honest man an honest car. They don't see the reason why they should kill each other for pennies. Crossovers sell good and give good margins. I strongly believe that customers also are who to blame. Today we take huge loans on cars that we do not need and cannot afford to impress other people and, uh, other, and our egos. And that's super stupid. We want something big but not too big. We choose more techno features than drive and soul in the car and purity of driving experience. And manufacturers just said, okay, take whatever you want and give us the money. And we ate it. And even, you know, the, what amazes me, the people take huge car loans that they cannot afford. That That's crazy. And car manufacturers realize that they don't need to waste their time in the cheap segment and just can manufacture more expensive cars and uh, earn more money. So today, the big USA the, of car culture cannot get new four-door sedans in the range from eleven to $15,000. But China has many models in the range and uh, not only petrol, but even EV cars that are lower than $15,000 are offered in huge variety. So now let's drive this wonderful vehicle. Okay, so first few meters in Chevrolet Onyx. Uh, the 1.2 three-cylinder turbocharged engine is well actually not bad not bad the turbo spins uh, good for this segment and, uh, you know it's uh, it has decent response to my uh, needs of uh, accelerating the car now we'll go to this wonderful corner and uh, 60 kilometers taking sharp so you can hear the tires squeaking the handling is very weird. It's predictable, but it's horrible. You can feel when it's losing grip. It will tell you that I'm losing grip and we're gonna crash and you're like, okay. And uh, there's nothing you can do about it. There's no uh, like uh, extra skill. It's just car will let go and that's it will slide and just turn over and you will die. Also, uh, we have here a, a stability control system that you should never turn off because uh, well, if something happens, something will occur, uh, you will have some problems on the road. What I don't like about this car is, the, I said before, previous the materials of the interior. Uh, everywhere you put your hand like this or like that, after hard working day, it's very cheap. It feels like it's been melted down from the used condom and uh, mixed with the G.I. Joe used action dolls from the 80s. And uh, it's just, you know, it's horrible plastic. I think this is the worst kind of plastic that uh, you can put in the car. Actually, you can do the manicure from it if you scratch it. So this is the quality of the plastic. That's not really good. Um, yeah, it has some toys. I mean, like heated seats, uh, cruise control, uh, what else, Bluetooth, stuff like that. But, uh, price in Uzbekistan is skyrocket. It's uh, $20,000 for the top trim. It's just uh, not worth it. It's a horrible, stupid price. Uh, what else? Well, I'm, we're going 60 kilometers an hour. I think fourth gear and uh, full throttle. Yeah, it pulls, pulls good. For its segment, it pulls good. the tire squealing already and I'm not like pushing this car really hard I think the problem the major problem is of course in the chassis but you can fix this car with the proper tires if you put the proper tires on it uh, it will handle uh, significantly better but not as you want it to handle Know, but again it will handle nicely I like that engine is responsive to uh, 
your acceleration. I mean, it's uh, nice uh, for such a three-cylinder turbocharged uh, little toy under the hood. It does the job. The question is, will it be as reliable as a normally as a natural aspirated engine? I think no, I think it will last only for like 50, 60,000 kilometers, that's my prediction. Then the turbo will die, then you have to restore the turbo, then the engine, maybe 80, 90,000, will eat oil, like I said before. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe there is some magic technology that will uh, make this engine reliable, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The engine is uh, not bad. Handling. I cannot say that it's good, but it's predictable. Um, quality of the materials is worse than shit. Uh, also, space at the back is miserable, as I said before. Really, I would not buy this car for what the GM of uh, in Uzbekistan asking $20,000. Never, not even consider it. I would rather buy something from China. Just order it for myself. And uh, the price for this car, top. 14, 15 thousand dollars, the top trim. That what maybe I would think, okay, it's a reasonable price, but what they're asking right now is just uh, stupidity. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me uh, in the comments what do you think about this car. Don't forget about the charity project called Food for Life Us. They uh, feed every Saturday uh, homeless people. Link is below if you want to help. Also, tell me in the comments what do you think about my video, about this car. And uh, please subscribe to my channel because uh, I want to do this full time and uh, I need your support. Take care and bye-bye.